Eva, Eva, Eva Grace is my little monet. Hello, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. It is Monday morning and <clears throat> we are having our gospel commentary today on the big feast of the What's the best feast? Huh? The Annunciation. The Annunciation. Very good. It's a, it's actually a solemnity. Solemnity of the Annunciation, right? Now uh, let me see. Uh what what mystery of the rosary is the Annunciation? The first one. Mystery of what? Joy, joy. The joyful mysteries. So the joyful mysteries. Okay? And it is the Annunciation. So it is a solemnity. Actually, in the church, it's a solemnity. It's not just an ordinary feast day. It is a solemnity. Okay? So it's a, it's a very long gospel. So we're going to skip reading the gospel. But uh, we'll comment on, on some of the salient points of the gospel today. Okay? So number one, you know the story, right? The angel, who was the angel? Gabriel. The angel Gabriel appears to Our Lady. About how old was Our Lady? 14. What does tradition say? About 14, 14, maybe 15, somewhere there, right? That's what tradition says was the age of Our Lady when she received that announcement that she was to be the mother of God, okay? So, <clears throat> what does that mean? It means that at a very early age of 14 or 15, somewhere there, who's about 14 and 15 here in this house? <laughs> okay, Jacob is 15, Sophia is 16, Jana's getting there, she's 13. It means that at about that very young age, Our Lady had clarity about her vocation in life, okay? About her vocation, about her calling, about what God wanted her to do and to be in this world, about how God has wanted Our Lady to serve Him in this world. So vocation, vocation is that calling to a particular state in life, okay? to a particular manner of serving God in our lives. <coughs> so it is a very, a very good habit, as early as now, while you are still very young, to already think about and pray about how you might discover the will of God for you in life, how you might discern what it is that God might want you to do for the rest of your life. That's what you call a vocation. Vocation means a calling, right? A calling from God. So Our Lady at a very early age <clears throat> understood thanks to the, uh, the announcement of the angel, thanks to the confirmation uh, of the announcement of the angel. But Our Lady had been praying for this ever since she was a little kid. See? You know how tradition tells us that uh, um, the parents of Our Lady, <clears throat> who are the parents of Our Lady? Saints Joachim and Anne, brought her to the temple and entrusted her to the temple. And that was where she spent her youth, her, her younger years, praying and serving in the temple, okay, in <clears throat> preparation for whatever it is that God was going to give her as a vocation. And during the Annunciation today, in the feast we celebrate today, that prayer was answered. And she received the, the confirmation that she was indeed going to play a very important role in the uh, history of redemption. She was going to be the mother of God. Okay? Now, one thing here that we have to understand is while Our Lady received a very important task, vocation, or mission in life, which was directly connected to the redemptive history of mankind, to the salvation of mankind, okay, each and every one of us, we don't have to be the Blessed Mother, but each and every one of us 
have the same kind of participation in the salvific mission of Jesus Christ. Okay? Because we all have a vocation that is related to the salvation of mankind. First, the salvation of our own souls and the salvation of others. How do we know that? Because that is part of our what sacrament do we receive where that vocation immediately is, is made part of our whole life? Baptism, right? Baptism. From, the vo from that sacrament of baptism, we all already had received <clears throat> excuse me, that mission, that very, very special mission of being part of the redemptive mission of our Lord. And how nice it is that we are having this feast day within Lent. Right? Because what do we commemorate in Lent again? Passion. The passion and death of our Lord. Right? And this is, the re this is how it all began. That passion of our Lord, that redemptive mission of our Lord, which was to be consummated on the cross, began on this day. Today is really the incarnation. See? It is today when the Word became flesh. On Christmas, which we traditionally uh, 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 celebrate the incarnation, well, that's actually already the birth of our Lord. Right? That was the birth. Today is the real incarnation. Today is when the Word became flesh in the womb of Our Lady through the Holy Spirit. Right? So today is really the beginning of the, the redemptive act, a redemptive mission of our Lord, beginning from the womb of Our Lady. Okay? So, the incarnation. Now, uh, we have to clarify one thing here. Some people, <clears throat> um, you know, they compare the announcement to Zachary and the Annunciation of Our Lady. Okay? What happened when... The angel appeared, the angel Gabriel also appeared to Zachary. Who's Zachary? The father of John the Baptist, right? What happened there when he was in the sanctuary offering uh, a sacrifice and incense and the angel appeared to him and told him, you're going to be a father? What did, what happened to Zachary? Huh? He doubted, right? He didn't believe, he doubted, right? He was skeptical and said, how's that going to be? I mean, you know, I'm old. <laughs> My wife is barren and old. How is that going to ever happen? You know, he doubted the angel. And because of that, he was punished. He became mute. mute. <laughs> right? Until the birth of John the Baptist. Now, Our Lady, when Our Lady said, how can this be? You see, the angel announced it. When Our Lady questioned the angel, how can this be? Because I am a virgin and I don't, you know, I'm a virgin. How is that going to happen? Our lady did not doubt the same way that Zachary doubted. Our lady's questioning was in aid of understanding how she can participate properly in the will of God. See, that is the big difference between the reaction of Zachary and the reaction of Our Lady. Zachary doubted. Oh, God bless you. But Our Lady, Our Lady was open, was open and wanted to understand more about how it was all going to take place so that she can better prepare herself, so that she can better participate in that vocation that the angel was announcing to her. See, that is the big, big difference there between Zachary and Our Lady. So, okay. So today, today let us, let us uh, give thanks. We're going to Mass after this, after breakfast. Oh, God bless you. Okay. Well, let's give thanks during Mass for this great feast. Let us try to greet Our Lady and be very close to Our Lady today. Okay? We can repeat. We can repeat many times today the uh, the uh, words of the Hail Mary, which uh, Elizabeth um, 
you know, uh, no, the angel Gabriel addressed to her, Hail, full of grace, right? The Lord is with thee, right? And also, uh, we can include uh, the, uh, <clears throat> the praise of Elizabeth. Blessed are you among women. Blessed is the fruit of your womb. These are very nice prayers. Today, we can say plenty of Hail Marys that can be our resolution to celebrate this feast today. Okay? Let's be very close to Our Lady. Let's say many Hail Marys today. Okay? They're not too long. It's not too long a prayer. And we can flood the whole day with Hail Marys in order to honor Our Lady on this feast day. Okay? So, see, Our Lady today was told she's going to have a bundle like this. See? No, like this, Ava Grace. Hey, Ava, say hi to everybody there. Say hi, Ava. <laughs> Who are you looking at? There. Okay. That's it for us, folks. Have a good day. Happy feast day to everybody. Uh, oh, by the way, we'll uh, be in the abortion clinic again uh, after Mass today. So around 9 o'clock. So if any one of you might be listening now and might uh, feel uh, called to join us and pray with us at the abortion clinic, uh, today is going to be a very nice day to petition Our Lady to end abortion. Today, the incarnation. Today, the time that she was told she was going to be a mother. Today. Let us pray for all the mothers of the world. Let us pray for those mothers who are having second thoughts about carrying their babies to full term. Let us pray for all those parents. And we will be in the abortion clinic today praying for all of them. Okay? I hope some of you who might be listening this early to this broadcast can join us. Okay, folks, have a good day. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye-bye.